Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Sunday the 24th of July. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to use the Tarot of the Spirit World for today's reading. I don't think I've ever used this deck more than twice or three times because the cards are just so weird. Um, let me show you. It kind of takes the original Tarot, but then it really adds a whole bunch of other stuff that is super... I mean, <laughs> we're going from... An Egyptian kind of god looking type of thing. And here we're in a courtroom in, I don't know, it's just peculiar. And here, what's this? Like, okay. Uh, I'm obviously using reversals. So I'm just going to throw these around a little bit just to shuffle them all the way. I'm going to choose three cards then to see what's coming up here on this day and what the tarot of the spirit world what the message is via these cards you know i don't think you have to particularly like a deck to use it i think as long as it's a different take on the tarot it's useful like you know when i use that chiro manchetti deck or whatever i really was like oh these are so hideous and blah 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 but the jokes on me actually because i locked this morning at what deck to use and i've got three decks by chiro manchetti <laughs> So, yeah, I'm the one who bought them all, so whatever. Anyway, let's see what these cards want you to be aware of here on Sunday. So first card is the Fool in reverse, okay. Then we've got the Chariots. Isn't that like uh, um, E.T.? where the kid um, rides his bike in front of the moon. And this looks like a totally different story. It looks like of mice and men or something. And what have we got here? The King of Swords. Okay. Yeah, this has always thrown me because there's a spirit in each, in each um, card. So it's like the herbal tarot with, with a herb adding extra meanings. And here we've just got a ghost as an extra. But I don't, okay, so let's see. Okay, so that's interesting. All right, so the fool here in this case, we've got a scientist who is channeling some sort of um, greater scientist from the past. And he's channeling that information in order to, to um, invent something amazing here now. Um, the fool is usually a young man that's walking along and he's got a backpack or, or a kind of little lunch pack. And he's someone who's got a dream and a plan, but who doesn't focus on the details, right? So the foolishness isn't that there's a sense of motivation and drive. That's the good thing. The foolishness is that there's an unwillingness to, to, to look at all the details and to consider what um, consequences your actions are going to have. And it's similar here because we've got the fool. He's just listening to this disembodied spirit here. Oh, he's also got his little lunch pack. But then he's got these, these um, particles floating in his hand. So I'm interpreting that as some sort of past scientist. And he's just channeling the information that's being given. He's not asking, is this a good invention or is it going to destroy humanity? You know, so by not focusing on the details, that's a real problem. The card is in reverse. So the message I'm getting is that there's a lack of motivation. And what you're actually good at is focusing on the details. So I don't think you're interested in particularly starting something new today in kind of redesigning your whole life. I think you're much more interested in sorting out what already exists, like existing plans for the week ahead or um, looking at the day and making the most of it. Maybe you've got people coming over for lunch or dinner or you're doing something here on Sunday and you're focused on getting the little things right and having uh, the best day possible without kind of trying to reinvent the wheel here. So if you're Waking up on Sunday morning and you're like, okay, I'm going to brainstorm and I'm going to find the idea for the new business. Then it's going to be more likely that the answers come via looking at what already exists in your life and how you can build on that and, and improve upon it rather than trying to 
channel some sort of completely new out of new idea out of the ethers. Next, we've got the chariot. So the chariot is usually someone who's on a obviously a chariot, and it's a, a victory lap. It's someone who uses self will to succeed. And here we've got this um, older man holding a gun, walking around, and he's got this disembodied chariot riding past the moon. So he's not winning because he's not in the chariot. He has to walk and it's all slow and difficult and he has to even protect himself with a weapon or he's got hunting something and going after something. And the bis disembodied momentum, the, the ghost-like chariot, that's moving forward and creating these photo ops with the moon and stuff. So there may be a lack of there may be a sense that I'm not progressing at all. I've missed the boat. I've missed the chariot here. I have to slog through the field. Everyone else in life is moving on nicely. Everyone else is having fun, but I'm not. So it's the total opposite meaning to the chariot card in the regular deck. Um, and again, it says there's a lack of self-will or there's a lack of opportunity to get something going here. Because I chose this deck for a reason today, right? There's the law, the law of attractions at work all the time. So you can't choose the wrong deck or the wrong cards. So these odd messages are here for a purpose. And I feel that trying to perfect what already exists is going to work much better than trying to rustle up this impossible seeming momentum or to do something about the lack of momentum particularly. And it's a better idea to organize and to administrate your circumstances rather than trying to make these plans um, for the future. Because the thing that's missing, I feel, is this willpower and this certainty that, hey, this is what I want to pursue. It's much cloudier and it's much more difficult to suss out. So I think meditating and trying to ask your higher self, you know, what am I, how can I recharge my batteries and enjoy this quiet time is going to be much better than trying to say, okay, I need to get up and generate something which I'm not feeling whatsoever. Finally, the King of Swords. King of Swords is like a judge. He makes good decisions. He's able to write the new book or pass the law or give a decision or, or have a great insightful conversation, give advice, be a mentor, all those things. Here again, he's being advised by someone and it doesn't seem so wise if you're the king to, um, instead of making your own decisions, to have someone whisper in your ear. I mean, that's the, that's the, 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 the trope about the king who's lost control. You know, like the one who's been hypnotized and is taking instructions from his grand vizier or whatever, or his head advisor. Um, the king who doesn't make it, yeah, doesn't make up his own mind, but has some kind of creep whispering in his ear all the time. Isn't the one in Lord, um, the Lord of the Rings as well? Yeah, that um, the king who gets possessed or something, and then we've got this this weird little um, dark looking person kind of constantly slithering around and, and making bad decisions on behalf of the king. So that's a, a well known kind of connection. So again, usually the King of Swords is someone who makes great decisions and who's free to decide and is a leader intellectually and a teacher and stuff. Here it's someone who's like being um, controlled like a puppet master and a little puppet on a string being told what to do and what to think and what to decide. Okay, so the King of Swords usually is about generating new content so again, with this situation saying, oh, it's not really you doing the thinking, you're probably responding to something that you heard or that you're influenced by. Instead, focus on the detail of sorting things out in the here and now, and don't immediately launch into the new project. Try and perfect what already is. Yeah. And the other thing that makes this deck different is, again, we have all these... Uh, men in the cards and the male usually, usually refers to building something independently and creating something new. The female is often associated with looking at what he is and improving that situation and lending your energy in a helpful way being of service and it's about connection and community and 
even in this deck, that's different because he's missed the chariot. He's being brainwashed and he's listening to these foolish ideas. So it's kind of like no one is working independently here. And the key is to um, independently work with what already is. That's the way to dodge un, un, undue influence and things that don't support you. Yeah, and to avoid making mistakes. Okay. So I, I think overall it's take it easy, recharge your bat batteries, perfect the little things in your life and don't give yourself a hard time if you're not, yeah, ex reinventing the wheel here and like getting all the answers to, okay, this is the new course I'm taking or this is the new business I'm starting or the new relationship. Just look at what you can improve in the here and now in your existing circumstances and that's more than enough. Number wise we've got seven and one is eight. Eight is power and strength in numerology. So it's the strength to pace yourself and to um oh the strength to have to to look at the little things to have the patience to improve and juggle around things that need improving and the strength to resist this urge to do something completely different just because you can't be bothered so it's like you know someone who instead of cleaning their room they're like okay let's just move house and give up on this tip i can't sort it out anymore it's going to be easier to move at this point and i know that's an over-the-top example but it, that's what i mean here so you're able to face difficulties that already exist rather than being irresponsible and turning your back on them and saying, okay, let me try something totally different. So face the music is better than running off and trying to do something that's totally unrelated. Okay, I hope you have a great day. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to audio reading with me. I use the tarot, astrology and numerology in my did I already say that? Yeah, I combine the numbers, the cards, and the astrology to give me an overall picture of you. The astrology chart, I take your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. That gives me a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. And if you have questions about life purpose, or work, or talents, or relationships, or anything at all, really, it gives me a really great blueprint of who you are, so I can answer those things. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. Please hit subscribe and share the video online. Have an amazing day, and I'll speak to you tomorrow.